If you raise soybeans, you've probably already been out in the field scouting. And, and Tom, what are some of the things that producers need to be scouting for when it comes to insects? Well, if you've planted late soybeans particularly, when they're, they're maybe starting to bloom or they're still in the vegetative stage, uh, what we've seen this year is uh, uh, um, two different caterpillars. They're green caterpillars, so they're hard to tell apart, but if you can just count to three or four, you can tell them apart. And the reason that's important is because the uh, one of them is a soybean looper, and we've seen some in, in some fields. And uh, if you choose the, the incorrect insecticide for them, they're resistant to some of them, and it's important to be able to tell the difference between soybean looper and green clover worm. Uh, and the difference is counting the number of legs um, on the, the, the hind end of the critter. Green clover worms have three pair plus the anal pro legs, okay. so that's four. And, and the soybean looper has three, uh, uh, two pairs plus the um, anal pro legs. And they both have this kind of looper action, so, and they're green, so it's really hard to tell them apart unless you make that count. Um, and the soybean looper is known to be res uh, resistant to some of the pyrethroid insecticides that are typically used to control worms. Um, it's also important to know what vegetative stage your soybeans are. When they're in flowering and starting to set pods, they're a lot more vulnerable to defoliation than they would be um, if they're just uh, still just growing and haven't started flowering yet. And and what will those insects actually do to the soybeans? They're, they, they don't feed on the pods. These particular insects are defoliators. They just feed on the foliage. So you'll see a lot of holes and, and that kind of thing uh, as they're feeding. And if you go out and sweep, you can and collect them, but you just, it's important to tell the difference between the two. What what should producers be thinking about if they're if they're moving towards a winter crop, say wheat? I mean, army worms. We always worry about those this time of year. Absolutely, and we've got we've been uh, testing some traps uh, for a company, and we've got traps set out with some of our county educators that have been sending in reports. In fact, Kyle Worthington uh, just sent one in today saying they're starting to catch some. But fall army worms. Uh, it used to be kind of an uncommon thing to see them in the fall. It's not so uncommon anymore, so uh, it's just important to get out and, and, and check the field. Because like you say, it, it, as the wheat emerges, that's when it's the most vulnerable, yeah. and then that's whenever they're actually attacking it. Yeah. So what, what, what can producers do whenever they reach those thresholds in the field? Uh, there are uh, plenty of insecticides that, um, that work pretty well on, on these these, this, this critter out there. Um, we're going to be looking at a product. It's a, it's an insect virus called foligen. Uh, I think it's called. Um, I'm going to be working with the farmer and uh, in, in doing kind of a demonstration this year to see how it works. Well, that sounds really interesting. We'll, we'll check back with you on that. All right. And for more information on what we talked about, you can go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.